What's my mother name? What's up guys, Kdub175 back with another Pokemon Duel video and this is the final push for the monthly ranks to try to get up into the top 1000, top 2000. This has been my main deck. Um, this was a deck that I tried a little bit to put together with the Nihiligos. That was a different deck as well, though this is going to be the main deck that I am going to take into battle and push for the top 1000. Um, hopefully we can get on a nice win streak and we should have no problem, but I did drop the Seismitoad and the Magneton for another Sableye in the Toxicroak that I did just recently get to level 10, chain level 1, so we are going to take that into battle and see how it goes. And at this point, I was at 2231. So to get into the top 1000, I would need 2358, which could be done with a nice win streak. Top 2000, 2283, which is definitely, you know, seems way more obtainable. Um, but we're going to see how it goes. Generally, I can get on some nice win streaks on the final push on the last day of the month which playing all these matches were on the last day of the month. Um, I did go ahead, I sped up the playback so we were able to get through more duels because I wanted you guys to see the majority of my matches that I played. We are up against G, pretty high level player at this point. And um, yeah, just checking out his team. He's got the Mega Gengar, only one chain level, chain level seven Deoxys. So he's going to bring out the Gengar right away. I already have the uh, Phantom Energy played. Um, I have been trying that out a little bit. If I do go first, playing that first turn, um, you know, that way I can guarantee that I don't forget. And it makes it a little bit, you know, nice to be able to let them go first so I can pick my matchups. Uh, so I do take Tapu Koko and go into the center. I got Sableye on my goal, the one that I did scale up the Confuse Ray on. So it has the highest chance of surviving. And, um, you know, the only issue would be is if somebody had like an X speed or something like that and they wanted to go in for the attack. Um, so my Toxicroak does have a pretty good chance up against that Deoxys, but, uh, you know, I would have to spin the double cross chop twice. So that is kind of the only problem going up against the Deoxys attack form. The odds of landing that, you know, just once on his own is pretty low, let alone twice. And he does have that Oracorio Pal style, which I cannot stand. Oh, it, it just, it gives him just enough edge that my chain level 10 Lunala just can't get it done without having some status effects, you know, them being burned or poisoned. So he comes down with the Lunala, just straight smacks my Coco, sends it to the PC. So I do have double Sableye for, um, you know, defending, which is pretty nice, to be honest. Um, it's, you know, they generally don't want to go in and attack. So as you can see, my Lunala just got completely decimated. And I am going to go Mega Gengar because I have the two Sableye. You know, he hits for 142. He can possibly land toxic just like there so that is going to give me a lot more favorable matchups and if i can you know make deoxys attack form and lunala noxious then it's going to make it a lot easier to knock out with you know even just my gengar being able to move through them having my lunala my toxicro um it's it's going to make matchups a lot better but it does kind of suck not having that seismitoad with that guaranteed poison so I do attack Lunala with an X speed. We do get the knockout and, you know, we didn't need the plate. It was kind of a waste though. Had I chose not to use that X speed, Lunala probably would have landed Moongeist or the Will-O-Wisp. So it was kind of nice to get a knockout. So I definitely obviously want to get some knockouts with Mega Gengar, but you know, hopefully we can at least poison them, not land dodge or something like that. So either we get a knockout or we're gonna make them noxious. So now our Lunala has no problem going up against that attack form. And he does come after me with his Coco, hoping for the gold into purple. Not gonna happen, which that's pretty nice. So I think I go ahead, I take another shot at this Deoxys attack form. Uh, you know, I could have went after his Gengar, but you know, the odds of an a knockout happening or me even making him noxious I mean there's a really good chance that we just went neutral so I went after the uh, the Deoxys so he does max revive that Lunala now right here I consider going through Deoxys attack form to just knock him out because he is noxious but then he'll be able to attack my Gengar with his Lunala which I really don't want I, I don't want that happening just yet so now I go ahead I take the knockout on the attack form um, 
you know, I'm not really too worried about my Sableye against his Lunala, though he does land that Moongeist Beam against my Toxicroak, and I was hoping to at least poison that Lunala. Not gonna happen. And I don't even think with a double cross chop, I don't think I would have been able to get it done because he does have that Oricorio, and even though we have the two Sableye, so we're basically hitting for 143. Now at this point, like, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure how I feel about my position at this point. It's because he does have that X speed, so he pulls it off, and he does get it to knock out my Sableye, so that sucks pretty bad. So I really have no choice but to go after this Oricorio, and too bad I don't have an X speed anymore. I used it on Mega Gengar, so, you know, it, it's kind of nice to have those plays at the end. So at this point, like, I'm pretty much screwed. I have to hope for gold in the purple, and he lands the Psychic. I do land the gold, and we lose to G, man. So GG to G, man. He was uh, up there in the 3700s. <laughs> We're at 3666, so, you know. It's kind of fitting for the uh, team that we're running. It's like a bunch of goblins. But uh, we do take that loss. We lose 27 points in our monthly and our um, our lead league rating. So we're going to get into another match, a 34-57 player. Pretty nice looking deck as well. He's got the Sableye and the Eveltal to try to combat against the uh, overpowering presence of the ghost types in the meta with Lunala, with the Mega Gengar, so we're not able to just kind of cruise through them. So, um, you know, I play defensive with the Coco, he plays defensive with the Magirna, I go with the Sableye, and just kind of wanting to pick some matchups. So he goes with the Steel Energy, I go ahead, I just decide to threaten game. And it kind of is a bad play, because I can't go through the Magirna, and he has a really good chance at knocking me out. But I was kind of just hoping for a Mele Mele Wish, or, you know, for him to hit that shift gear, and then I could take the entry point, and then force him on the goal. But that doesn't happen. We do get knocked out. Now, he chooses his Eveltal against my Gengar, which is a really good matchup. Even a chain level 10 Gengar can't get it done, and he does have the Dark Energy as well. So a nice little Dark Energy, Steel Energy deck, and it does counter our deck pretty pretty well. So, uh, you know, I don't really like my, I don't really like my uh, positioning right now. I don't like Toxicroak against Sableye. I don't like Gengar against Eveltal, though I could go Mega Gengar and try to knock him out. But uh, man, I don't know. But I do sit Coco there. I just want to make sure that I can actually pass through Eveltal, even though I know I could. Um, but he does back up with Lapras. Now that's, that's pretty interesting, but he does have the double Max Revive as well, so, um, you know, he wants to try to get a freeze with that Lapras and then come out with the Suicune. So he's going to land the Draining Wind. And, okay, so yeah, that was pretty lucky for me. You know, I, I debate surrounding that Sableye, like Sableye for a Sableye, because uh, my Toxicroak isn't a bad matchup for his Magirna and his Cabalion. But um, now I'm frozen. So now I kind of need to go Mega Gengar. I don't want that Suicune to come back out with that Max Revive and try to get a Banish. Like, we are running Phantom Energy. We are supposed to banish the opponent. We're not supposed to get banished. And see, he decides to come out again anyway. And he does get the Knockout. So I have a few turns left on Mega Gengar. Um, you know... I don't want to go after that Suicune because I don't want to get frozen. Though we could go after it whenever we're down to, like, you know, one of our last turns. And we just cannot knock out this Eveltal. Getting really, really annoyed. So, um, yeah, at this point, I just want to block off that Suicune from coming in and taking the goal. And now he's going to be able to just attack my Gengar with his Eveltal with pretty much no punish outside of hitting Miss. So I do, and right there I misplayed, I should have uh, tagged Lunala, but I didn't. So that was definitely a misplay, which doesn't allow me to surround a Suicune. So I get punished pretty bad right there, honestly. Wanted to make sure he didn't have any hurdle jumps or anything. And um, so now I'm just going to bring in Sableye. I want to have a little bit of extra backup for my goal. Okay, that's, that's fine. We're able to tag him. We get another knockout. And 
we actually get really lucky and knock out that Sableye. Okay, so he's going to go defensive with the Cobalion, and I'm just going to take one of the entry points, okay? Now, he does come in in an attack with the Z-Veltal, and we have two Sableye, and we just knocked out his Sableye, which allows us to go neutral and get the surround with our Lunala, so that was really nice. Now, I decide to move toward his side of the board, but he does have another Max Revive, and that's what I was looking for, and of course, he comes out with Sableye, confuses our Lunala, so yeah, the, I, the, you know... I should have probably hung back a little bit, but it's not going to stop me from taking his entry point. And, um, you know, I, I just want to try to hold him down a little bit, try to get a few knockouts. I do go after his Magirna with my Toxicroak, and unfortunately, we get knocked out and we don't even leave Poison behind because he does have the Steel Energy. Magirna is a Steel type, so obviously, you know, we can't Poison him. So that kind of sucks. So now I got to try to just, you know, block him off. And I want to try to hold these entry points down as long as I can. Not going to happen with that Sableye. I was kind of hoping that I got burned by the Sableye. And, um, you know, or just he lands confused again. So I'm going to come after him with the Tapu Koko basically to try to cycle. Though I could get punished if I land my Wild Charge into his Ice Beam. Because then I'm going to be uh, frozen and it's going to be tough for me to try to... Uh, Try to tag him but he hits the sheer cold we hit gold that was super super nice so i'm gonna move up and attack because i can't be put to sleep but we land gold into a 72 not gonna get it done but we are cycling pokemon at this point so you know i'm not too mad about it okay and he does attack with his lapras lucky for us we do land the contagious terror and you know i really don't want to get put to sleep Okay, so we are going to confuse the um, Magirna, so that's pretty nice. I do have gold blocks, so I don't mind trusting my Sableye against that Magirna. But it is the one that I expanded gold on, so I do need to be careful. And we are going to get frozen, but I can easily tag it, though... Okay, we land another Confuser, okay? So... We got to give up an entry point, but he's able to come out because our Gengar's asleep anyway. But I really wanted to be able to tag Gengar because at this point, he's going to be able to continue to bring Pokemon out. And we get the clutch knockout. Sableye just destroys that Magirna with the confusion. So pretty happy about that. So he is threatening us around on our Gengar. Oh, oh man, a physical attack there would have been really nice. I'm trying to get my Toxicroak in the, in the action here and see if we can get a knockout against this Cobalion. I trust Sableye against the uh, uh, Suicune as well. And man, we just can't get it done. Obviously, we can't poison the Cobalion because it is a Steel type. And we do get the knockout. Sableye is doing work. So he's going to bring out that freaking Lapras, man. And he is just basically just holding our Gengar hostage. So I'm going to go X speed. I could get punished and get frozen, but lucky enough, we don't, but we don't get a knockout either. I was really hoping for a gold in the purple, and I need to get the Z-Veltal knocked out. So that draining wind goes off. Uh, you know what? Yeah, this is probably a misplay, because if I attack the Z-Veltal and it lands draining wind again, but it doesn't, we do knock it out, but it only goes to the bench because of the dark energy. But if he would have landed that draining wind again, I think he could have moved my Sableye again. And then he could have just went and walked right up next to my goal, pretty much forcing me to goal block. So, I don't know. Maybe I should have just went and tagged Sableye, but it worked out. So, that's pretty good. So, I do want to try to knock out this Cobalion, and we get super lucky gold into our psychic and we are able to go after this cobalion we hit the moon geist and we're going to send that cobalion to the pc now we are going to be able to move over and uh, tag our gengar which i'm really really happy about we have two sableye on the field so we have to miss basically for him to be able to uh to knock out our gengar and a contagious terror could be all we need but we do go neutral because of the dark mist and man, this is just going perfectly, perfectly. So I don't attack because I don't want to get frozen. So I'm like, okay, move back next to my Gengar. And he does it. He's going to attack my Sableye. So I'm like, all right, hey, if, that, if you'd rather do that, then I'm cool with just shuffling back and forth. 
and even if I get put to sleep or frozen, I can easily tag it. So this is pretty much GG. All I'm hoping for is to land my gold, hopefully before I've run out of time, because if you guys noticed, I'm 30 seconds, and he's got almost three minutes. So I have a feeling I've been playing against AI this whole match. I don't know. I mean, there are people that can play really fast, but to be on turn 177 and have basically three minutes left, like, I don't know. But that is GG. You know, Sableye is just way too strong for Lapras, and we do get the win, guys. 23 points, 36 points onto the monthly. So we lost 27 on the match that we lost, so we're actually positive. Uh, for our monthly ranking out of these two matches. So we did climb, we climbed the monthly a little bit. Gonna pop this lockbox, <laughs> just a common, gonna get a Beedrill and a Shinx, but we do get a rare medal, so that's pretty good. And I open a gold booster as well, just gonna be an uncommon Piplup and a Geodude, uncommon Ingot, and a common Cube. Another gold booster I am opening up, and another uncommon. We get a Bergmite. Man, I've had such bad luck with my time boosters recently. Like, even on the 11 win streaks. But we are at 2240. So, yeah, that's pretty much securing the top 3,000. We're only six points away, and the top 2,000 isn't too far off from that. And we have Vietnam 3737. So, another really high ranked opponent. He's got some chain levels. Um, pretty scary deck. He's got the Oracorio, he's got the Lunala, the Gengar, Mega Gengar, the uh, Mega Mewtwo Y. Pretty scary looking team, guys. Okay, so he goes with the Mewtwo. So I do put Sableye down. Now, I think this might be a misplay because, you know, he could go Mega Mewtwo Y. He could Annihilate, Gold into Purple. I could have went with Toxicroak or Lunala. I think both have a decent shot at knocking out Mega Mewtwo Y. You know, if he lands Hypersonic, um, you know, my Toxicro can land the 141. I don't know if he has any chains. I forgot the look. He does go Mega Gengar, takes the entry point. Now, I do have Sableye to guard the goal. He has an X speed, um, and this is the one that I expanded gold on. So he goes for it. I'm just hoping that he lands purple. No, he's going to land his Abyssal Grip. Knocks me out. Now, here, I make a huge misplay. I'm like, okay, if I gold block, he's just going to go Mega Mewtwo Why take my entry point, and then I'm going to have to attack anyway, but uh, I don't think you can have two Megas on the field at the same time. I go with an X-Speed on Lunala, hoping for gold in the purple, or Moon Geist Beam into his Abyssal Grip. Doesn't work, and that's GG. Really quick match. Uh, Vietnam just destroys us, so we lose 20 in the monthly, so, you know, now we're, we're back negative. So we're not getting on that clutch winning streak that I was hoping for, but um, yeah, I don't think you're allowed to have two Megas at the same time, so that was a huge oversight that cost me the game there. Now, we have another opponent that's in the 3300s, uh, but he still has a pretty decent deck, so I'm definitely not counting him out. Um, you know, I've played some pretty insane matches against some lower ranked players, you know, especially in room matches. Uh, sometimes you just need to get that quick daily mission. So you see somebody in there that's like 2,800, 3,000. You're like, yeah, you just pick them and, uh, you know, think it's going to be an easy match. But, man, I, I've actually been beaten by some lower ranked players and not just because of like crap RNG. Like, you know, rank doesn't determine how great you are. But um, there he goes, man. He gets gold into purple, knocked out. Pretty lucky. I'm, I, I was really happy about that. So, it, you know, generally when people go Mega Gengar at the beginning and start attacking everything, you know, hopefully you just, like, just withstand. So I go after him. We don't get knocked out, and he cannot surround us. So I'm trying to force the gold block. And I'm glad we don't get that gold into purple, like what happened to him. And he doesn't even choose the gold block. Okay, so I was hoping for a dodge, but that's going to get it done. Like, he, he, you know, he was probably hoping for a weak spot if we landed our Abyssal Grip. But lucky for us, he wasn't able to get the Cyclone Kick. And we're going to take 32 points back. So we are now back, I think, you know, we're ahead. We're positive in the monthly rankings. So now we're going to go against Yorkshire, 3,400 player. And yet again, another psychic deck. I mean, it just seems like that's what the meta is. Like anything above like 32, 3,400. I mean, I don't play a lot of players that are like 38, 3,900, but 
yeah, these are these are pretty common decks up in up in the high league rankings. So uh, pretty annoying. I, I feel like my deck's pretty strong, but these decks are even stronger. But I feel like my deck can definitely counter this deck as well, because you know if I can get the uh, Deoxys attack forms confused. You know, I can make them Noxious or Poison, depending on Mega Gengar or Toxicroak. Um, you know, Lunala can get shut down fairly easy. So um, I decide to attack this speed form. And we do get the knockout. That's all I was hoping for. I'm like, you know, don't hit Gold into Purple and don't hit Miss Toxicroak. Because Toxicroak has let me down by landing Miss a few times. And like another problem is since, you know, like I am expanding the cross chop. You know, there's a lot of cases where it'll just land the cross chop once, so it gets knocked out and it doesn't leave any poison. So, you know, that kind of sucks, but, you know, I, I'm trying it out. I'm trying it out, and I, and I do like it. So I do go Mega Gengar here, and I take the surround like that instead of taking the entry point because he does have Max Revive, and he's able to take his speed form out and cover up the goal. So that's why I did that. And he gets so lucky and lands the dodge. I'm like, come on. Like really, like every time, like I can, I can actually win against the Oxus attack form with Lunala or Gengar. It's like they land slip or they land dodge. But we do get the favorable roll there. He doesn't land dimensional slip, so at least we can make him noxious. So man, I really want to go after that other Deoxys, but I don't want to risk getting surrounded. So I do go after the speed form, and we land dodge. I'm like, come on, Gengar. So that's why I think Carmonite is a decent investment if you are using Gengar and Mega Gengar because you only have them around for a few turns, you know, and if they're one of your most powerful pieces, like you want to be able to land that 140 plus attack, that Abyssal Grip, you know, that's generally why you go into Mega Gengar. But it's, you know, poisoning isn't bad either. I just, landing dodge, like you don't really need to, right? You know, aside of like maybe your opponent landing Cyclone Kick, that's pretty much your only hope. To survive his landing dodge but other than that i mean dodge isn't all that useful on mega gengar all right so i got sableye and he attacks me i'm like let's go like get confused boy so i do go max revive here and i want to get out my gengar and i'm going to try to get in between my lunala and his deoxys so he lands slip, unfortunately, we land our three star, but I, I changed my mind. I decided to go after this Deoxys with my Lunala. So we get the Moon Geist, and then he respins me into the Will O Wisp, and I'm like, oh my god, anything but Will O Wisp. So now instead of a minus 40, he's only minus 10. And you know, I should have went with Gengar because I think my Gengar would have been able to win no matter what. And the X Speed actually comes in really clutch, and we get rid of that annoying Oracorio. So, really, really happy about that. And I take this around on the Deoxys. Couldn't be happier. Though, I don't have the Phantom Energy played. I don't have the Phantom Energy played, so we don't get a Banish. So that, that sucks pretty bad. So now I gotta back up with Sableye. And, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm kinda ticked off that uh, I didn't have the Phantom Energy played. But I am gonna lock down that one entry point with Lunala, and I gotta try to work my way up and uh, try to lock this down, you know. Coco's gonna get knocked out. I decide to, I think, advance over to my goal with um, Toxicroak, have a little extra backup. I got two Sableye down guarding my goal, so pretty good. You know, I attack the Coco there, and then I go after the speed form. And I'm like, Phew. I'm like, bro. I, I really, all I really wanted to land was Psychic there. And if he would have got gold into purple, I would have been so mad. I would have been so mad. So then he gold blocks with Lunala. Really good play because it's just going to, it's confused. So it's going to go into Will-O-Wisp more than, you know, 50% of the time. And now he's got another Oracorio on, the, he's got his Oracorio back. So I got to try to get my Sableye over there. Sableye is going to be a pretty decent attacker for either of them. And he comes in with the attack form. So I'm like, come on, please slip. No, no, he hits the psycho boost. And then he respins me. So I don't know if that was a misclick or if this guy is also using AI. But I'm like, dude, that is so, so, so good. Now, I I, I should have went in and tried to attack the Oracorio, but um, his Coco could have came back and surrounded me. 
So that's why I moved Lunala back and I wanted to be able to jump over with my Sableye and at least put, you know, some type of status effect down. So now he's burned, right? And so now he has a, a, a much better chance of landing Psychic or miss and then I can and then I can knock him out with my Lunala but he does knock out our Sableye so I do have to gold block and I'm like okay well my Sableye should be a pretty good matchup for both of those figures and I play the Phantom Energy because I do want to try to get a Banish and he's going to Pokemon Switch so then I come out but I don't get a Banish because I guess they there has to be three of them on the field or the bench, so I don't think the PC counts. And I'm sure you guys would think, like, as much as I run Phantom Energy, like, I should know this, right? But um, I guess it's the first situation like that that I've ever ran into. So it's like I'm always constantly learning new things while playing this game. I'm sure you guys do too as well. Like, it's easy to feel like you know every aspect of the game, but then some weird situation forms and something happens and you're just like what like oh okay like yeah i didn't think that would happen so yeah definitely got to keep that in mind i thought they just had to have at least three pokemon of the same type but they have to be either on the field or on the bench so yeah the pc does not count guys and then i land a miss with gengar oh, i was so upset about that so i'm like you know what I'm just going to try to advance with the Sableye. I really hope my uh, Toxicroak and my Lunala can just kind of hang tight, guys. Just hang tight. I'm going to go after this uh, Lunala. He's going to attack me. Uh, I'm like, what? So I got to go after this Deoxys and look. We're going to go neutral. Like, I have to burn him or I have to land Moon, guys. And now he's threatening us around with the Coco, so I had to back up. And this is looking like GG, boys. I mean, yet again, just lost too many rolls. Now he's going to advance with his Lunala. I just cover up the goal with the Toxic Rogue. He's just going to back up. He's got time on. So I jump over with Lunala, attack that Coco, and we do get a knockout. Couldn't be happier, guys. Couldn't be happier. So now I'm going to go after him with Toxic Rogue because I want to be able to poison him at least or get, have a chance of him slipping. I really want him to slip. So I'm going to attack again. And that's what I was talking about, guys. Landing that single cross chop where it's not going to leave poison. And, you know, like nothing good comes of it. So I'm left with Lunala. I do go after the speed form. Knock him out. So now I got to go with Coco because I need gold. And boom! We get the clutch knockout. Gold into purple. So this may be a comeback, guys. Maybe a comeback. He takes the entry point, attacks. I get the Melly Melly Wish, and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? He does not have gold block. Let's go. Melly Melly Wish. All I got to do is land Psychic. Psychic for the win. I'm like, please, Lunala, just land white. And there we go. We come back. Another insane comeback, guys. Probably the best comeback outside of that first match in, in the gym. If you guys didn't watch that in the part one of the three-part series of, like, the most epic Pokemon Duel Adventure series I did, check out that first matchup insane so we get a decent amount of points we are 2051 we have 2281 so we basically just just fell outside of the top 2000 so i definitely want to play another match i don't know the top 1000 i'm thinking at this point maybe out of my grips just because i don't want to have to sit here and grind a ton of matches and really what's the difference top 1000 2000 five booster tickets and 50 karma we still get the UX ingot and rare metal. So, you know, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play another match. That was an insane comeback. Like, I could not believe I won like that. I'm so glad I got it on video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed that comeback. That was so good. Like, I've really like fodder. I don't know if you even watch my videos. I don't, I mean, you've never even commented on one, but I definitely want to uh submit that for like the top 10 plays of the week or something. Cause that was an that was a pretty insane comeback. So we're against I Rage, another 3,700 plus player, and I'm getting up there pretty good too in my uh, in my league rating. Um, I think I might be at an all time high at this point, and if I win this, I know I definitely will be. So let's just see how this one turns out. I haven't blocked off with my Coco. I'm just double checking. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm not crazy. If I would, if I just threw that, that would have been nuts. So at this point, I do have to cover the goal. 
I go with Toxicroak because I think Toxicroak's a, a pretty good defender against Coco. And, um, you know, though I kind of want to have it mobile, poisoning things, knocking things out, um, I kind of like my Lunala to be a little more mobile. I don't want my Lunala being stuck on the bench. Um, so he does have the uh, Metal Sphere. I'm going to try to go after that, uh, that Sableye, but I'm not going to attack. I just want to kind of put some distance between my Gengar, and then I'm going to move up with this Sableye. So, you know, at this point, I don't really mind my matchups. Now, you know, I'm kind of concerned for my Toxicroak against that Sceptile. I'm not going to lie, that Sceptile could easily knock out our Toxicroak, but, you know, we can hit for 143 at this point. And he has three chain levels. So, yeah, I mean, we're hitting for 141, and so is the Sceptile. So we can go neutral with the double cross chop uh, or knock him out if he hits a single Leaf Blade. And I'm trying to figure out a way that I can get a surround here, but there's really no way to do it other than going Mega Gengar, jumping on the other side, holding him in place, and trying to knock him out. Because we can definitely knock him out with our Mega Gengar, and he hits the Stealth Hit. But he can't go anywhere because he does have weight, and that Tapu Koko can't go anywhere either, uh, basically because of Mega Gengar's ability, though we are at risk at getting surrounded, so we need to get out of there, attack that Sceptile again, and lucky enough, we didn't hit purple. Because I would have been very upset if our Mega Gengar would have got knocked out because of gold in the purple. I take his entry point with Sableye, though I guess I could have easily put it between our Mega Gengar and his Lunala. Uh, he does play the Metal Sphere. So, you know what, I go X speed, go after this Lunala, and, um, you know, because I am afraid of that Moongeist Beam, and, you know, we didn't need it again, we just get a regular knockout. So, you know, it might be a waste using these X speeds, uh, you know, so close to my goal, but yet again, he's got one of my entry points, his Lunala's down there, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to risk anything, you know, getting burned would have been fine, but that Moongeist Beam would have not would have not been good for us and then he comes after us and attacks us anyway but he has burned his max revive so i am going to bring over my sableye and you know if he goes after our toxicroak we have goal block he can get poisoned um i can easily just cover the goal with lunala anyway as well yeah so there's really no reason to to goal block here now see he could have uh yeah, he could have attacked there, I, I would have thought. But I guess he wanted to save it for the Tapu Koko. And he does get the knockout. So I am in a very bad spot, guys. I have to attack this Lunala. Now, it is poisoned, okay? So, you know, landing Psychic in the Psychic, I win. But if it lands Will-O-Wisp, I have to land Moongeist Beam. If it lands Moongeist Beam, that's GG. And lucky for us, Psychic in the Psychic is going to get it done. Whew, and we survive. But he's going to YOLO with the Tapu Koko, try to knock us out with the gold and the purple. Not going to happen. Get out of here, Coco. And, uh, you know, that was a close one. Like, we almost lost. We could have easily lost that. If he would have landed Moongeist Beam, that would have been it. So I am going to go after this Sceptile, and it would have been such a good knockout because I could have taken the entry point, got rid of that Sceptile. But, of course, no, we had to hit miss. Like, if we would have hit our white, we would have knocked him out. So he is going to go after us again. I'm kind of hoping for the Contagious Terror, and we do hit it. Um, but he gets the Stealth Hit, takes our entry point. So I'm going to go ahead, get Toxicroak out, which, you know, it sucks, because now he can block us off with the Solgaleo. So I do move up with my Sableye, and I really, really, really like what he does right here. I'm like, come on, hit the Contagious Terror, but it doesn't happen. I was like, man, we could have got a Surround Knockout, and been threatening the entry point. So he's gonna move down. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna move here just because I don't want that Sableye backing up the uh, Zapdos. But he does attack with his Zapdos. Like, he could have easily jumped over us and took the entry point, but then I could have jumped over him and then he could have jumped over. See, you know, it could have went that way as well, but it didn't. So I'm like, all right, I need to get a Confuse Ray, and we do land it. I'm like, thank you. Oh, how many times I've went after Solgaleo with a S Sableye, and uh, we land our gold. And then we knock out that Sableye, and then we get the double cross chop knockout, uh, you know, because he's confused. So, I mean, that was just beautiful. So we cleared up our entry points. 
I'm gonna try to take over another entry point. He's gonna jump over and attack. I'm like, what? And he lands the Moongeist into the to uh, our Confuse Ray. So, like, I couldn't be happier about that. So, not too worried about that Lunala. It does have a status effect, so Phantom Energy will uh, come in very nicely there. And I just go after this uh, Zapdos because I'm like, you know what? If he lands Steel Wing or the uh, Thunder. Um, charge like we got a decent shot at knocking it out and what else can I do and if I get knocked out I can cycle more Pokemon and we get super lucky and land our gold into his thunder charge like wow like God. but I mean dude it's a big part of his wheel too I mean you see that big gold and yeah like you know the odds of him landing gold are pretty good but he does have you know like his all other half of the wheel guys so you know, it makes sense. It makes sense why it works out like that sometimes. So I am going to go after this. Oh, my God. And then I'm like, seriously? Like, how lucky are you to land miss, shift into the Moon Guys beam, and I land my one-star Will-O-Wisp? Like, that was just super, super unfortunate. And again, we're, uh, we're looking like we're in a pretty bad spot. Pretty bad spot. But uh, he lands dodge. I'm going to move up with Gengar. I'm like, please don't knock us out. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, just land Psychic. We're good. I'm going to go after the Sableye. And we get super lucky again. Nightshade's going to get it done against his Shadow Sneak. And all we need is a blue or a purple. And we don't land it, but he lands Mist. Solgaleo, the Miss Machine. And that's going to be GG. I rage, you know, like... I, RNG was just like insane that match. That's going to get us up to 2319 and we break 3700 guys. This is the first time I've ever been in the 3700s. So definitely an all time high for my league rating. And you know, we're going to pop this lockbox. I'm not in the top 1000, but we did make the top 2000, 1399. You know, not too bad. 1399. I'm pretty happy with it for, you know, as little as we played, I guess, this month, you know, waiting to the very end. It was like the last night. Uh, just, you know, kind of had a ton of stuff going on, guys. Um, you know, that's why I should definitely start playing sooner instead of, like, waiting till the very, very end. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I could have kept playing and try to get a few more wins. And no doubt in my mind, if we would have had more time or if I would have kept playing, we, we probably definitely could have got into the top 1,000 because the, um, you know, the monthly rating limits or like cutoffs for each tier were pretty low this month i think um it's already been you know figured out that the uh the monthly cutoffs for like each tier have are as low as they've ever been but that's where we're at guys 3707 37 out of 35 most of those are dark bots um and i forget how many actual matches i played you know a couple handfuls of like real matches so we lost a couple uh, but yeah, man, we, uh, we, we did pretty good. So I think that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Definitely leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Follow me on Twitter if you guys haven't already. And hit me up in the comments if you guys don't use Twitter. But until the next one, later, guys.